What's New in 13.2 for ASP.NET Developers, presented by Web Program Manager Mahul Harry. In this session, you'll see several new enhancements, including a new Web Forms ribbon control, multiple new MVC extensions, extended grid view capabilities, an elegant new modern web theme, and more. Thank you so much for joining us. I will now hand things over to Mahul Harry. Thank you very much, Amanda. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is what's new in 13.2. Uh, so all week, if you've if you've been a Dev Express customer, we, we've had this series of webinars, and today we're going to be focusing on the ASP.NET uh, developers and all the ASP.NET products that Dev Express is uh, offering. So today I'm going to cover uh, several different things. Now, uh, if you're not familiar, I am Mihul Harry, Program Manager of the Web Technologies here, and on this web webinar we have the the full shebang of team. Of course, you know, we've got Amanda, but we also got uh, developer team leads uh, that have written a lot of this product. So they're in the chat, in the back back channel. So if you've got specific questions, they'll be happy to answer those. Uh, our C2 Julian is here to make sure I don't reveal too many secrets. But no, he can also help answer any of the uh, major questions about like, hey, you know, why don't we support Java or something crazy like that. So, uh, you know, this is going to be an awesome webinar. I'm excited. So let's get started. All right, the first thing is we're going to start off with a bit of bad news. So uh, I have a little bit of sad news here, and we'll just get this out of the way. And if, if you hadn't seen yet, I, I posted about this, but uh, as of 13.2, it's uh, goodbye IE6. So uh, it, it's we've supported IE6. We were proud of it, and, uh, you know, it's just come to a time. So why are we doing this right now for so long? Well, we actually started listening to Microsoft. Microsoft is the one that kept saying, hey, everybody stop using IE6. It's an old browser. But more than anything, two major reasons was it was limiting us. It was limiting us from, from moving forward and using modern web technologies like CSS3. And, uh, and it's costly. It, it just takes a lot of effort and time because what happens is, you know, we had to we had to do certain things because we have these beautiful themes that our designers make to ensure that they work properly in a lot of different browsers. There's a lot of things that we have to do. So, you know, we just said, look, the the amount of customers who are actually using it in the world is less than a one percent in the West. So, you know, we even looked at stats for our own DevExpress.com site, and it just it was just what was time. So, um. I'm happy to say now that you know we moved past IE6, and one of the changes from that is that we had introduced this thing called render mode, and uh, in 13.2 we, we're getting rid of this render mode, so we, there's no need anymore because we used to do classic and lightweight. Well, now everything's going to be using lightweight by default, so whenever possible, you know we didn't we don't have to make that distinction anymore, and that's also good news. So you can read about all of this stuff at uh, my blog by just going to uh, devexpress.com slash mehul or just go to the click on the blogs link and uh, when you see uh, a picture of me you can just click on that and that'll take you to the uh, devexpress site as well. All right, now on to the good news. It's time to pop some champagne because we've got two big uh, things that we're celebrating as devexpress. All right, so the first is we are celebrating our 15th year anniversary, and uh, this is uh, something that you know uh, we're, we're super excited about. If you've been looking at our social properties, we've been doing contests and stuff, and so keep an eye out because even today, uh, you know, I've been, I've been speaking with our team. They're doing this uh, some stuff out there on Facebook. We've been putting out some clever questions about some of the stuff that I'll be showing you today. Julian's got some questions about the history of Dev Express, and there's a lot of good stuff out there. So pay attention to that. And so we're going to party. In fact, this is uh, some of our devs. You know, see some of the phone GS guys in front, the ASP.NET guys in the back. So we're going to we're going to party and celebrate because today is a 13.2 release, and you're going to be seeing our DevExpress.com website changing. So uh, you know, we're going to ride the bull, right? 13.2 is this bull of an awesome release, and we're we're going to ride this thing. So let's let's check it out. So let's see what's uh, what's happening, all right? So. I, I created a little website here called What's New, and honestly, it is just file new. If you choose, choose Dev Express project template, that's all it is. There's nothing else going on here. It is a web forms project, and uh, you know, just to uh, show you, the only thing I've modified is the menu. So let's just take a quick look at what's what's happening in this website. All right, so 
this is the standard DevOps website. Now, the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is the new uh, ASP.NET uh, overall uh, items that are affected in 13.2. So in this menu structure, I've kind of broken it down by things that are overall, web forms, MVC, SharePoint, some other items. So there's a lot to cover, all right? And uh, if I if I tend to go fast, is because there's a lot to cover, but feel free to put your questions in. And, and you know, if I don't stop, I'll, I'll definitely get to the questions at the end, okay? So uh, this is just the standard DevOps project template. Now, the, the first bit of new news is that we've got a new theme, and it's called Moderno. Now, because, you know, we've stopped supporting i6, we started doing this new, th new thing. Now, why are we calling it Moderno? Well, first of all, uh, it's because it uses modern CSS3 techniques. So this theme doesn't actually use a lot of um, uh, images. Now, in the past, we had to because to ensure cross-browser compatibility, which is like one of the most difficult tasks in the world, we had to do that. We had to use a lot more images and stuff. But now that browsers have improved, we can start using this. So for, for uh, places where we're doing rounded corners, we'll use CSS3. Shadows are drawn with CSS3. So there's less images in here. So not only does it feel modern, but it feels lighter and it feels faster. And uh, so I'm a big fan of this uh, this new theme. Uh, is, and the other thing you'll notice is it's got bigger uh, sort of um, paddings. And that, that was on purpose. So that way, this, this theme is actually uh, adaptable for mobile as well. In fact, you'll see it listed under mobile. But it, it's got a, so you can see the color, the blue there, is very similar to a Metropolis theme. And it's the same SharePoint blue that you find sort of from the Microsoft sites. And it's, so they, they share a lot of similarities with that last new theme that we had, the Metropolis blue, but that it's got some bigger uh, uh, paddings and so forth. So it's a very cool, awesome new theme. So that, that takes us to our other new control. Now, before I move on, I want to show you another example. Now, if you uh, once you install the 13.2, uh, you're going to see the new demo center. So we, you know, I, I, I'm proud of this. We, we put a lot of work into this release, by the way. So, uh, you know, definitely play around with it. If you've, you've been checking out the beta, you'll see all this cool stuff. Now, uh, you know, one of the one of the things is we've broken the demos back up in the in the uh, and you're going to see this on our website as well. So we've got some dedicated pages for MVC and HP.NET. But I want to show you the, the webmail demo. Now, uh, I've talked about extensively this in the past. Now, by default, the new webmail demo is going to use the new Moderno theme. Now, as I said, it's similar to Metropolis Blue in many ways. But uh, I really like it because, it, it, you know, as I said, I can run this site on a tablet. And the site is, uh, you know, I'm glad you guys were talking about responsive and adaptive. I mean, that's something we're definitely thinking about. And I'll talk a little bit more about it at the end. But that's something we're definitely thinking about. So, but as you can see that if you ran this on an iPad, you'll know that, oh, I don't have a certain amount of real estate. So it collapses the bar. You can see that it's just really nice. So that if you were to scroll down or something like that, it's very easy to uh, play around with the site. So anyways, check out the webmail client demo. All right, moving on. Let's talk about the, uh, the other new item that we have, the icon library. Now, this was a highly requested thing because we've, we've had a set of icons that we've put out for our different platforms. And a lot of customers were asking us, hey, you know, uh, we'd really like to see this for uh, ASP.NET. So we, we did some work and we did some interesting things. So I'm actually going to show you uh, a couple of items. And uh, that is that we also have a new ribbon control. And uh, we did this control. So I'll show you the icon library in just a second, but first let me show you the uh, the new DevExpress ribbon control. Now, the, the ribbon control uh, is part of 13.2. It's available for web forms and MVC, and you'll find it under the DevExpress uh, analytics, I'm sorry, um, analytics, navigation and layout. So it's called the ASPX ribbon. We'll drag and drop it on here. And what's interesting about it is we can data bind this. Now you can create those items manually. So let me just save this file and reopen it and go back to designer. And then it's going to load up the master page and all that. Now, right now, this, this isn't really hooked up to anything. So I can actually go up here, click items, create uh, new groups and uh, create new groups and new items and so forth. So it, it's, it's uh, you can add child items, et cetera, et cetera. Now, What's what's interesting is you know you can totally customize this right and you can add these navigational items and so forth, 
So uh, but what I like to do, you know, is is uh, bring in a file so it can show you a little, save you a little time. But uh, I'll come back to this uh, thing here in just a second where we mentioned the icon library. But um, let's let's just take a quick look at what the ribbon is. Now, if you've used, uh, let's say, Word, you'll be familiar with the ribbon metaphor. Now, Microsoft introduced this ribbon toolbar in 2007. And at first, people, some people loved it, some people hated it, but it's definitely found a place as a new navigational metaphor. And so they introduced this because what had happened was the old Word had so many options. So Microsoft said, we're going to go back to the drawing board. We're going to uh, uh, bring in all the top features and put them right where most people use them. And what's great about this ribbon is that, you know, it, a lot of people really uh, attach to it, right? Because now they said, okay, yeah, the 50% case or the 60, 70% case of all the things that I use, for example, uh, editing uh, text or paragraphs or size and so forth, are all done right here. And then the other things, other cases are on the other items. So this, this metaphor was really interesting because it also combined sort of the effect of a menu with graphics. And so a lot of customers have been asking us, hey, when are you guys going to bring this for ASP.NET? So we resisted because, you know, we wanted to make sure that we got it right. And I think with this uh, new ribbon control, we did definitely get it right. So we definitely support things like if you double click on a tab, it collapses. You can... Um, add multiple items. So for example, in here, we've got uh, not just a menu, but we've got a drop down menu from here. We've got editors like our list control. We've got uh, all these, uh, in fact, this is one of the new controls, well, the updated controls. But you can see we've got all these items. Now, uh, with all of these items, we also have these beautiful icons. And you might be asking, hey, Mahul, those are great, but where do I get those, right? And I'll show you in just a second, because this was this this story with the ribbon and the icons the, and some of these new controls that I'll show you, they all kind of fit together, right? Which is why this release is so special for us, right? Because we, we're able to kind of synthesize a lot of these uh, new features and controls to tell a great story. All right, so uh, before I go on, I want to show you one of the coolest new features, though, of this uh, ribbon control. And that is the ability for uh, adaptive layout. So what will happen is, Adaptive means that you your control adapts to the given size. So what happens here is that if this control didn't have enough space to be displayed, what will happen is it'll automatically collapse and still have those items. So for example, here I've got download and support, but once it runs out of space, it collapses into a group and gives me a drop down menu. So as you can see, we've already started work on making sure that DevExpress is thinking into modern web uh, space even with our HP.NET products. All right, now there's all these uh, other great items like data binding and templates that are absolutely supported that you'll have plenty of time to uh, play around with later. Now, I wanna show you uh, the responsiveness of this control as well. So that uh, adaptive means that, you know, when, the, when it's first rendered, it's gonna see the browser side. Now responsive means that as it changes, that it's able to respond. So here, I've got all of these items. Now, if I gra grab this little um, uh, grip here and start resizing, you can see the ribbon is going to collapse those items. So now, all those items in the paragraph are still available, but it's conveniently resized them for me. So it's not, it's not just adaptive, but it's responsive as well. Now, to see how easy it is to work with this control, let's go back to Visual Studio and I've got a little XML data source. Now in the app data, I've just thrown in a couple of things, but one of the things I did was I got this math interface. Now all it is, it just got, creates some groups of items. Now I grabbed this file actually from our demo, so don't worry, you can get at this file as well. Now it's pointing to some ribbon images that I actually don't have, but you're gonna find that that's not so important because, uh, let's just data bind this. We're gonna click here, I'm gonna choose a data source. I'm gonna point to XML data source. And let's make sure, yeah, there's no other items in there. All right, so now you can see that it's looking for some images, but it doesn't find them. Uh, but that's okay, because the ribbon is, is quite smart. It's not gonna display uh, in non-images that are not there, right? So it's, and as you can see, just by dropping the control, data binding it, I've got this beautiful navigation metaphor, right? And as I mentioned that, as I 
resize this, it's responsive. And I still got all of those menu items that I was looking for. Now, if I do want it, uh, if I do want to mess around with the um, with the icons, what's great is that because we've added some uh, new items here for you, you can uh, easily use this new icon library. So, what is this icon library? Well, we took all our set of icons from, let's say, our WinForms and ASP.NET, and said, okay, let's take the best ones, professionally polish them from our designers, and make them available to you. And what's great about this is we've integrated that with our DevExpress controls. So you can go to a image property, let's say for example in ribbon or menu or some of the other controls, and go to the icon ID property. And there you'll find this drop down. And when you click this drop down, you'll get this icon picker. And this is fantastic because not only do we give you all the different types of categories of icons, from everything from actions to alignment to arrows. Uh, for paging and so forth through export icons, but we also give it to you in different sizes, so 16 by 16 or 32 by 32, depending on uh, how you need them. And you can just see they're big and they're beautiful, but they're also available in grayscale. So if you don't want them colored, you can get them in this beautiful grayscale uh, two-tone colors. So, uh, and these are completely available. So I can say, hey, I want the plus sign as the icon for this ribbon item here, and then. What's fantastic is because they're integrated with our controls, these are going to be delivered via, via our HTTP handler. So you're going to still get that beautiful speed and flexibility. You don't have to worry about, wait, where's that icon coming from? What's well, automatically delivered by the DevExpress assemblies. We've taken care of all that beautiful work for you. So you still get that nice Ajax interface. All right. So play around with it. Check it out. Let us know what you think. And uh, it's time to move on. All right. So. The, the next thing I want to talk about, and I'll come back to sort of bootstrap and localization a little bit later, but the next thing I want to show you is this other big control we've been working on, and that is the spreadsheet. Now, it says preview because we're releasing as a preview, but this, this is probably the, the, the biggest control that, uh, you know, I, we've, we've done for ASP.NET in a while, right? Now, why? Because, first of all, if you're familiar with Microsoft Excel, then you know that this is huge. Now, what it essentially is, is a spreadsheet, uh, it's a control that allows you functionality like Microsoft Excel to provide data editing capabilities for uh, spreadsheets. And you can create a spreadsheet from scratch, you can edit one. Here, I've loaded a spreadsheet, but uh, let me just kind of show you why this is such a big deal. So let's bring up Excel. We've got Excel 2013 here. And I'm going to open this document called Breaking Even Analysis. Now, this is the, the exact document. I've got it here. I've got a formula in here. I've got my nice ribbon bar, all that good stuff, right? That's Excel, right? I can scroll down. I can select. You know, we, we've got a beautiful experience, you know, rich uh, desktop experience. So to do this for the web, you know, we, we, we wanted to make sure not only did we do it right, but we did it with the same beauty, elegance, and performance that you come to expect from DevExpress ASP.NET controls. So uh, let's see, uh, before I go into some of the features, let's see how easy it is to work with this thing. So in Visual Studio, we're going to bring up uh, this little page here. So I've got that break even analysis document here. And I've got a little spreadsheet page here that's just empty. Now, you, you'll see sometimes I, I work in design and sometimes I work in source. It doesn't matter. You can work in either. Um, so I'll go to the toolbox, and under data and analytics, you will find the ASPX spreadsheet control. Now, sometimes, uh, you know, if you have trouble finding, you can always do a search in this uh, toolbox here. So you can do a uh, spread here, and it'll bring up the ASPX spreadsheet. I'll drag or drop it on here, and uh, just give it a quick minute for Visual Studio. So the first thing is. <clears throat> The spreadsheet control obviously is a big control, right? Like Excel, it's going to require a certain amount of space. So what I'm going to do is, because I put it in this little container space in this master page, I'm going to set its height and width to 100% so that it adapts to that space. And the next thing is I want to open up a little file. Now, 
uh, I can add a file manager control on here as well. And I'm going to show you that in a, in a minute, how you can make a really rich, awesome interface with not just the spreadsheet control, but other Dutch for HP.net controls. So we're going to go to the spreadsheet. I'm going to go to the HTPX site here. Now, I've simply got a little, uh, on, on page loader, I just said, look, if it's not a post bag, now I want you to go find this file, right? Now, I'm just doing this path.combine. This is the right way to, to take a... Uh, a relative path and I'm sorry take an absolute path and make a relative and all that good stuff so uh, don't worry this stuff is in our code as well so what I want to show you though is you simply call the HP Express sheet dot open and that's it and pass it the file you want to open so that that one line and dropping the control is all we've done it literally takes 30 seconds and now I'm gonna run so as soon as I run this I have a beautiful spreadsheet control that was it not only created for me this beautiful ribbon with all the common uh, um, spreadsheet functionality that you would need, but it opened up that file the same exact way. It looks exactly the same as it did in Microsoft Excel. And look at this. I can edit cells just by clicking on them. If I double click on it, I go into editing it. And here, I've got that same exact complex formula. I mean, let's, let's look at some of these formulas. We've got formulas for financial, logical, text, daytime, you name it. We've got them all. You can make custom formulas if you like. And this is uh, an, an amazing, amazing powerful control. And we've also integrated the beautiful DevExpress chart functionality. So this break-even analysis chart, uh, let me just delete it. Let's say I wanted to uh, get this variable cost. I can highlight this information here and just say, you know what, create for me a, let's say, a clustered bar chart. And just like that, I have a clustered bar chart. Now, uh, I, I highly recommend, even though this is a preview, please play around with it. Let us know what you think of it. And there's a lot more functionality you can play around with it. And let's 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 look at that. Uh, let's go back to our online demo here. And I, I mentioned charts. You can also insert images. You can upload an image, and you can have images embedded inside your Excel and they'll also get displayed. So um, let's look at document processing. This is a really cool little demo. Now, in this demo, we've got that break-even analysis, but what we did here up here is that um, uh, we've got a, our DevExpress ASPX file manager control. Now, it's pointing to a couple of folders I have on the site, and um, you know what's cool about this is I've got a full interface. I've got a possible full interface, so that says, you know what, let me look at the schedule file. So when I double-click on it, it goes and loads it in the spreadsheet control, just like that. I mean, look at look at how beautiful this control is. It just blows me away. So uh, I can easily go to employee files or so forth. I can edit them online, and I can also save them back to the server. Now, let's say I wanted to allow somebody to upload their own file. We can do that. So I'll just upload this sample forms, click upload, and now when I click on this file, it's going to upload this. Now. Another cool thing is we I can upload I can open a CSV file just as easily. Now, w performance is also something we've worked on heavily for this control, right? And I was uh, I was talking with my good friend Serge uh, who developed uh, part of this control. Uh, you know, and, and just to kind of give you a little background, we we introduced a spreadsheet control for our WinForms uh, and some of our other sheets. And what, what we usually like to do is you know we like to code refactor. So this is the UI portion that you're seeing, the web UI portion. A lot of this functionality is coming from our what we call the spreadsheet core. So it's great that we had that to begin with, right? Because that helps us do that. And then we, the DevExpress HP.net team, do all the hard work of making sure this is a modern web interface. Now, one of the things for the modern web interface is, you know, what if you have a really large file, right? Especially, I mean, how would you handle that on the web? Well, you already know what the DevExpress grid views performance capabilities with large number of data rows. And we've done something similar, not exactly the same way that GridView does it, but I want to show you. So last night I was thinking about this, and I said, you know, what's the best way to show off uh, this this feature? Well, I got to get a large uh, spreadsheet file. So you know what I did was, you know, the the sound logical thing. I, I got on Google and I said large spreadsheet file, right? Now, and and I did the thing that you probably shouldn't do, which is I found a really large spreadsheet file. And I just downloaded it from the web, and I said, yeah, that's that's what you do. Now, folks, don't do that. All right. Now, 
luckily, this is the safe enough file. I did I did kind of check it out. But uh, what was interesting about it is it has like 18,000 rows, right? So when I open this file, it's got a bunch of data. And look at this thing. The spreadsheet loaded it with no problem. And as I scroll down, watch this. It is automatically going to load this. Now, this is the demo running locally on my system, right? So this demo is not going to be as performant as, let's say, going on uh, devexpress.com, which is what I recommend. But as I, I, as I go through this demo, it's going to dynamically load the rows. So what's happening here is, is as I as I page down, you can see that as it reaches the bottom, it's going and fetching more and more rows. So this is a fantastic feature that we've added right into it so that a, you don't have to worry how big of an Excel file that you have because uh, you know we're, we're not going to load up the entire thing, but we're all obviously going to be smart and make sure your web interface is still going to be awesome and fast. Now, uh, since there's a lot of other things to show, I also want to mention that uh, you know we've got the capability to work with multiple uh, uh, sheets a, as a at a time as well and there's this cool feature let's say you wanted to use uh, sort of the spreadsheet as a template well here we've got it's sort of a capability we're using almost like a report template so we've got some parameters and we're going to generate these payments so you know what let me see what my next five months of payments or sorry uh, five months of payments are, are going to look like and as soon as I do that and I apply that I get only that amount of data that I was looking for. So if I say, hey, just give me the next five payments, that's what it looks like. So you can dynamically uh, control this as well from the server. And, uh, you know, I, I recommend you play around with this. All the data for this stuff is right there, you know, of how we're doing the lower amortization, how we're doing uh, the actual inserting the parameters and uh, running and all that kind of good stuff. All right. So that's the spreadsheet. Uh, you know, it's, uh, as I mentioned, uh, maybe I didn't. Let me bring that up here. Let's go to spreadsheet here. It is, as well, responsive. So look at that ribbon bar. Now, you can see that the spreadsheet itself is going to require some amount of uh, uh, width, but because we've done all the hard work and we're looking into that area, you can see because I set the width to 100%, it's smart. And it says, oh, I see you want me to adapt. That's no problem. So DevExpress is definitely in that arena. And this is important because, you know, these tablet devices, mobile devices, they're outselling laptops and PCs. And there's so many kinds out there. So you have no idea what the size of the uh, screen that the person running your site will use. And so it's important. And responsive is something that's definitely on top of our mind. So uh, stay tuned for more of that in the future. All right. So let's get back. And now let's take a look at the um, the other uh, big feature, uh, the DevExpress HP.NET Grid View Batch Editing feature. Now, batch editing is the ability to edit a bunch of rows at the same time. Now, the grid already supported several different edit modes. Now, typically, when you edit a row, this is what happens. Now, uh, I I really love the Moderno theme, but I'm gonna. Uh, for these webinars, I'm going to make my screen size a little smaller, so I'm going to go with Metropolis here. And so this is your typical scenario. You you, you run the edit form, and you know you get this uh, edit form, which is nice. Or you can make it sort of just in line if you prefer, and you're editing a row at a time. But then you got to decide: Do I update this? Do I cancel this? Oh, then I got to click edit again. And you know we we've shown how you can actually uh, you know sort of tab through this and. Uh, we've had sort of workarounds, but you know what people were really saying is like, hey, what I, my end users, they're, they're power users. They want to power through and make a bunch of changes at the same time and then upload them at the same time or cancel them at the same time. So that's batch editing. So I'm happy to report that we, we've got this batch editing mode and, and it's got some actual uh, performance uh, advantages as well. So it, and there's a couple of ways that it can work. So the first thing is, Right away, you don't have to see click an edit button to go into edit mode. As soon as I clicked on the cell, I'm in edit mode. So I can say chai two three four, and as I press tab, you notice that it highlighted this color and it said, "Hey, you just edited this row." So if I leave beverages alone, nothing happens. If I leave uh, quantity alone, nothing happens. But if I change unit price, it lets me know. And as I keep tabbing, I'm 
simply in edit mode. And look at this, this is just fantastic. So I can be a power user and say, hey, boom, boom, boom. I can go on to the next one, say in 33 here, and I am not limited by uh, the interface anymore. I am just powering through. And what's great is that this is all happening client side. None of these changes are gonna be uploaded until I take some action that says either save changes, cancel changes, or maybe something like paging. So at, at this point, I've got unsaved changes, and any action is gonna require me. So if I click this, it's gonna go, hey, 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 you're, you're about to page away. What do you wanna do? Do you wanna save this data? I can say no, just go ahead and keep paging, or, uh, I'm sorry, it's gonna say, uh, it's asking me, hey, if you move away, you're gonna lose the data. Are you sure you wanna do that? I can say no and save the changes, or I can say, yeah, go ahead. I don't care, right? So, or I can just go ahead and click save changes as I edit them. Now, there's a couple other modes that you can do for this. Now, rather than saying, uh, clicking on per cell, when I click in it, show me the whole row. And this could be interesting because let's say you've got, you know, 20 columns that you're editing. And I don't recommend putting too many uh, columns and rows for editing because, you know, it, the more you put on the screen, the more the browser has to do the work. But what you can do here is that this, this row editing is useful because let's say I go here and I forgot which, which row am I, uh, what, what row am I editing, right? In case I lose track. This kind of gives you a visual indicator that says, oh, I'm editing this entire row here, right? And so that's a, it's just a visual cue. It's what, whichever you prefer. And you can also make it the action on double click. So right now, let's say I don't want the user to accidentally click in here and go into edit mode. I want them to have a specific Hey, you know what? I mean to edit this unit price. So I'm going to double click here and then it puts me into edit mode. And so if I accidentally click back one a single out, it takes me out of edit mode, but I want to make sure that they are committed by using that double click. So all of these are available. And what's fantastic is it literally is one setting to put the ASPX grid view into batch edit mode. And that's just setting under settings editing, change the mode to batch. That's it. We've got some extra things for styles of what color you want to use for the background when it's changed, but that's it. And then that this is a huge, huge, awesome feature. So, all right, now let's move on to uh, the uh, token box control. All right. So, you know, I was joking with Julian, and Julian, who's also secretly my blog post editor, because you know, let's just let's just face it, he's, he speaks English better. So uh, Julian and I were talking about this token box, and he's just like, yeah, you know, it's just a name. Now, what does it mean, right? So what is what is a token? Now, uh, I, I, when I was writing a blog post for this, you know, this I, I was asking myself the same question, right? What exactly is a token? And um, it, it's kind of interesting. So a token, if you look it up on Google, is essentially a representation, uh, or, or, or you can think of it as a symbol. So what this token box control is, simply at its, at, at its most simplest, it is just a list view uh, that, that lets you select. It's a drop-down control that you can select a value. The only difference is that once you select the value, how the item is represented. So rather than just putting the name, this, this is now symbolized. It's now become a token that is has this sort of box around it with a different color background. And we also put an X that lets the end user select, uh, close it out. So what's really great is it's a visual cue. It lets your end users know what they've chosen because they've got these tokenized versions of their choices now, right? So it, 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 I really like it. Now, uh, if you use Facebook at all, you'll, you'll notice that in Facebook messages that it, it does this as well. So, um, See if I can show you a, a version of Facebook here that is uh... all right. So here, let's say I want to send Julian a message. As I start typing, you can see Julian pops up, and as soon as I select his name, I've got a tokenized version. Now, uh, uh, Gmail has also started doing this as well. I, I really like the feature because, like I said, it, it's a visual cue for the end users. It, it really gets them going. And uh, let's just take a quick look at it in Visual Studio. All right, so uh, let's go to our 
token box here. Now, I, I've got a little SQL data source pointing to a little uh, uh, customer's uh, file here. And because it is uh, using uh, uh, a sort, a sort of a name value pair, you want to figure out what your value item is and name value uh, item is, your text and, uh, item that you're showing. So you'll find this token box under the common controls. And I'll simply drag and drop it on here. And from the design mode, I'll just do a quick setting or two. So the first thing is I'm going to make it a little wider. And under the data source, I'm going to select SQL data source. Now you can manually create the items. You can define what the value item types. And so for us, it's string. I'm just from the properties going to set those items here. Now you can find them under the uh, data. So we want to first of all define what our data source is and what our text field is. So our text field is going to be company name. This is what we're going to display. This is what the end user is going to type to find the item with. But what matters to us is the actual ID or the data field that it's associated with, right? So you, you just want to set up those two things. All right, once, once that's done, we're simply going to run this. So once we run this, uh, immediately I've got a control. Now I just did a click inside here. And as I type the, it's going to find me all the values for uh, the. Now, uh, it didn't find it right away because I need to set the search type to contains you know what let's let's keep it simple for now let's uh want to keep this demo moving here so let's say i type an i right now i believe it's i've got it on uh oops all right so let's uh, uh, let's see if i can show you here around the horn uh as i should uh, as I start typing, it would find them for me, but as I select these items, I get tokenized versions, right? So as I go down all the list of items, I get tokenized versions added to the, uh, the box. Now, selecting the same one won't add it twice because it's already been selected. So this is similar to having, let's say, a set of check boxes, but instead of check boxes, I get the visual representation up here. So I can always go back and say, no, I didn't mean to choose this one or this item, or I did mean to choose a different item. So it's, it's a very slick control. It's available for both MVC and web forms. All right, now I want to show you the custom color picker. Now the color picker is a control that we've had that we just updated a little bit and, it, and I want to quickly show it to you. You'll find it under the data editors and you'll find it under color editor. And you'll notice that we've done some work to make it a little slicker. In fact, uh, let me show you, I, I kind of like how it looks under Moderno. So uh, what happens is now you've got the ability to do also custom colors, right? So when I do custom colors and I pick a, let's say very nice red, I select OK, it's added for me here under custom colors as well. So it's a very nice control. As you can see, I, we're using it here to show you how you can build a dynamic sort of interface as well. So this uh, panel is dynamically being updated from this color picker choices that we're making. And I can say, hey, you know what? I want the text to be white. I want the border color to be green, et cetera, et cetera. So very slick control. It's available for uh, both platforms as well. All right, let's move on. Let's jump over to, mm -hmm. you know, I'll show you this localization demo real quick. Uh, so under grid view, uh, you've seen our accessibility work. You know, we, you know that we have Section 508 compliance. We easily support right to left layouts, and uh, you know, to but to really show you all the awesome things that DevExpress can do with uh, sort of the web and compliance and and uh, different languages and localization, we, we made a special demo. So this was already possible. We just made a special demo for it, right? And what's interesting about this demo is I can easily click on a different language here. So I can say, you know, let's go. Deutsch, uh, German here, and I, the items are automatically updated for me, right? So it automatically selected that. I can select, uh, I believe that's Russian there, and those items are updated for me. So check out this demo. Uh, mostly we wanted to show you how easy it is to get started and uh, modify uh, the grid to use that. And it's really just a very simple culture setting that you, ha that you just had to uh, make a use of. All right, so I just wanted to throw that there. It is part of the uh, uh, all this big work that we've been doing. When I get back to Bootstrap a little later, I'm just simply going to mention this because 
you know, Amanda and I were talking, I, I can do a whole webinar on that. So I said, you know what, let's do a whole webinar on that. So that'll be on like uh, mid December, early January, something. All right, so we've got web forms. Let's move on now to MVC. Now, uh, I, I, because this is a web form project, I won't go into it too much, but we introduced seven new extensions. Well, six and a half, really, because this wasn't new, but it had new functionality. But the big news is MVC 5 support. So when Microsoft released uh, Visual Studio 2013 in, I believe, October, they also introduced MVC 5. And uh, MVC 5 was a big deal because uh, there were some changes to it. Now, uh, as I mentioned, I'm going to I'm gonna cover this in a future uh, webinar because uh, I don't want to slow it down. I want to leave some time for questions. But MVC5 uh, did make us introduce a new assembly called MVC5, and here's why. There, there's a little... Uh, uh, Microsoft had a breaking change, and one of the things was that MVC5 requires full trust. Well, we support medium trust. So Microsoft said, no, you, you have to do it. Now, they, they may get that fixed, and as they change, we'll adapt as well. But that was that was the main reason. It was sort of our, our hands. But, you know, all the Dev, 50 DevExpress MVC extensions are fully supported. We've got a ton of things. So if you're not, if you're new to MVC, don't worry. We've got a fantastic story there. So, you know, definitely join me. It's not going to be an, just an MVC webinar, but this bootstrap webinar that I'm talking about. So... Uh, and, and I and I kind of talk a little bit about what all the different things Microsoft has done. So if I have time, if you guys really want to stick around later, maybe I'll show a little bit of this. But um, it's really kind of long to get into. All right, so let's go back and uh, I'll show you some of these uh, uh, extensions. So I, as I mentioned, uh, the DevPress 13.2 uh, release is out today. Uh, the website's probably updating, but you can look at the demos now. So if you go to devexpress.com slash MVC, you can take a look at some of these new items. For example, if I go to navigation layout, you'll see the new ribbon for MVC. And, you know, DevExpress, we took a certain approach with MVC. Uh, in fact, we even updated some of these demos to show you because a lot of customers are like, hey, I love your MVC stuff, but I'm new to MVC. MVC looks kind of hard. How do I do it? So, you know, we, we, we've even made uh, the, that concept a little bit easier. We said, okay, for example, if you go to the overview pages for a lot of these items here, we said, look, we'll put helpful links for getting started. We'll tell you exactly how easy it is. So what it takes to do the model, the view, the controller, the code for that kind of stuff, the features. So, you know, definitely play around with this stuff. It, 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 there's good stuff out there. All right, on to the, uh, the, the other new extensions. So form layout is a extension we had for web forms. Now, I'm happy to report we, it's available now in MVC. But you, you'll probably remember that in form layout, there was a designer, but there's no designer in MVC, right? And we're not going to change that, right? Because that's just how Microsoft envisioned that, uh, that platform. Very designer-less, very close to the metal. And, uh, but what's great about this form layout is you can create powerful forms like this in MVC using model binding. So if you have a model that you need to bind to, you can simply say, hey, listen, here's my model. Go update for me. Go create for me a nice uh, a form that the user can enter using DevExpress control that supports validation, all that good stuff. So definitely check that out. Uh, I mentioned Ribbon as well. Uh, the the new uh, token box is also available as an MVC extension. And we've also brought in a new um, control for MVC that we had for web forms called rating control. Now rating control allows your users to put in sort of a vote, right? So let's say you want them to say, hey, listen, I want to be able to vote on uh, uh, on a certain thing. So not only is it an editor that lets your end users select some items, but it's also a way to display their choice as well, right? And you can display it using exact numbers, right? So this one goes and uh, calculates nine votes and what those votes were and gives you the uh, average out of those. Or you can say, no, uh, bump it up to full or give me half precise amounts. So you can control the precisions. All right, I'm happy to report we also brought over the image gallery. The image gallery is a control we've had and this too is also a very uh, responsive control, right? So if you go to the responsive layout for the is control and launch this demo, you can see as I adjust it, it automatically changes, 
So, like I said, we're 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 I am big time into uh, responsive as a PM, you know, and the uh, team and I uh, we're, we're we've got some great ideas, uh, and uh, you'll see them more in the coming uh, releases as well. All right, so image gallery, fantastic way to way to show off, um, you know, a, a set of images, and so. In the last release, we had the image slider, and now we've got the image gallery. So we've got a full set of image and data navigation MVC extensions that you can start using today. All right. Uh, I believe we also have the, I mentioned the uh, token box. We also have the color editor as well as this uh, list box extension. So uh, a lot of things are, are just finding parity now in uh, MVC. So, for example, we've got this custom CSS capability in the HTML editor extension now as well. So that way you can you know, define your own custom CSS and have it rendered for the uh, for the items. All right, now let's go back. And, oh, okay, can't forget the grid lookup. That's big news. All right, let's go back. So the DevExpress grid view has a lot of awesome uh, features. One of them is this uh, lookup control. So what it was is, for a long time, customers would say, hey, I've got a dropdown, and I want to throw a grid view in there. So we showed how to do that using templates, but there were some issues here and there. So we just said, okay, we're just going to make it a control. So now we had this grid lookup control for a couple of years now, but people were like, hey, but how come you don't have it for MVC? Well, in Happy Report in 13.2, it's there. And this is a full grid control. So for example, I can start typing here and say, find me all the Java-based items. And Actually, you know what? It's under item template here. I can do the incremental search on. And it's going to say, find me everybody that has the word fuller in it. And it's going to find me this items. And as I select them, it puts it as a selected item up here. So I can go back and say, no, I'd rather select that item. Or we can do multiple record selection and say, look, these are the languages that I'm most interested in. And as I do that, it finds me and uh, updates for me. And because this is still the grid view, I can do things like sorting, I can do things like paging, and I can even column move. So it's, it is a full-on grid view control. It's available for MVC. All right, let's move on. Um, the other big news for 13.2 is SharePoint 2013. Now, you may, may not use SharePoint, but we definitely support it. Now, What's the SharePoint story? Well, this is Microsoft's uh, John, you know, big CMS editor they've had for many years. It has a huge ecosystem out there. Now, when we first released it, we had a couple extensions, the list grid view and the HTML editor web parts for SharePoint. And uh, the, you know, we've always had a good story. So we started su supporting SharePoint 2013 more recently than 13.2, but it wasn't until this release that we were really able to dedicate, bring you this new demo site that really shows off how to use many of our uh, DevExpress controls in SharePoint. So this is the calendar. While it's not a web part, I will show you how easy it is. In fact, you can use the tree list and just look how powerful it is. You can really take your SharePoint site, make it beautiful, and because we're using this Metropolis theme, it shares many of the same colors, so it fits right easily into the SharePoint ecosystem with no problems at all. And you know, using DevExpress uh, uh, editors is going to give you not just beauty, but cross-browser compatibility. So SharePoint has done a lot of work in 2013 to make themselves a little bit lighter, faster, more performant. And you know, if you want to make your SharePoint sites even more mobile capable, you can use maybe our, our Moderno theme to get that capability uh, to those end users. So, uh, and what's great is you know, all these examples you can download. Right? So we've got a, a specific link where I can say, hey, that calendar demo, how's that done? So when I click on this, it's going to download me for that SPX page so I can see it specifically and just import that page into uh, uh, my own SharePoint site if I wanted to. So definitely check out uh, uh, sharepoint.devexpress.com, and this is part of the 13.2 uh, the, the release. All right. Uh, now let's uh, move on to the bit of sort of final news, which is, um, we've got a we've got a, a, a new demo. We're we're always looking for uh, demos that we can bring you, and one of them is the sales dashboard. Now, uh, I'm going to try to convince um, uh, Azrit. Uh, you've seen him in the past uh, do uh, webinars for us and stuff. Uh, very smart guy. He's put together using DevExpress HP.NET controls this beautiful demo that shows a sales dashboard. 
Now, this is something you can build, and not only is it beautiful, but imagine that you can run this easily on an iPad, right? So, for example, I can click this easily using my finger. It's got large touch targets. I've got uh, the capability here to say, look, you know, show me the information for that hit point. So, this is fully using DevExpress controls, and it's uh, rendering beautifully on my, uh, uh, whether it's a device, whether it's a, uh, I'm sorry, a touch device or it's a browser, it's going to look and feel beautiful because DevExpress fully supports touch for iOS, Android, Windows 8, and uh, all the major platforms are covered there. And it's even got this nice track bar uh, control that we've got it integrated in here. So as I move it, you can see that these items are updated. So play around with this. The entire code for this is available locally on with each DevExpress installation. In fact, all the demos are. So definitely play around with that. And I think I just had a couple of uh, smaller items that I wanted to mention, which was, ah, uh, as, a, as a note, let me show you where exactly the, the demos are. So I'm on Windows 8.1 here, but it, I believe it's similar in, in the other ones. If you go to your C folder under Users, you'll find who you're logged in as and a public folder. So under Public is where we store the demos. And the reason is because of, you know, rights for IS Express, all that good stuff. So under Public Documents, you'll find the DevExpress demos. Now you'll see you now they're called DevExpress demos 13.2. In the past, I believe we called them the experience from my guy. You know now you're you're just gonna see the word DevExpress everywhere. So just look for DevExpress, and under components you'll find all the demos. So these are definitely they they just moved slightly because of this name, but they're still under the same public documents location. They haven't changed that. Probably the naming has just changed slightly, but all the subfolders are still exactly the same. So you'll find uh, SPX, CS. In fact, here's the the um, um, the DevExpress sales demo that I mentioned, the MVC demos, the clinical study demo uh, is MVC demos are there as well. So all the DevExpress demos are under one location that you can absolutely open up, play around. If you like something in there, hey, use it on your site. Then send me a tweet uh, at me whole Harry on Twitter and say, hey, look what I did with your demo. I would love to see that. I, I'm proud when somebody finds our stuff so awesome that they want to incorporate it into their own uh, websites. All right, and finally, uh, I speaking of uh, clinical study, uh, it's not necessarily 13.2, but this is something that I blogged about was, uh, you know, I've talked a lot about that clinical study is the best uh, MVC demo that we have because they incorporate so much techniques in there, MVC specific things. But on top of that, we've got a nice little theme for it. It's not a full theme, but a lot of people were saying, hey, give it to us. Right, so I wanted to tell you that's available, but only certain uh, controls uh, support it. So you know, uh, don't come back to me and say, "Hey, listen, it's not fully supported." Well, you can come back to me anyways. But uh, you know, it, right now, it, it, I just wanted to put that out there that if you do like it, it's available. And uh, all right, so let's finally close this out and open it up for questions here. And uh, there's my information. I thank you very much. I hope, hope that you have a great time with the 13.2 release. Oh, speaking of which, I'm sorry, Amanda. One last thing I want to mention is, uh, and I wanted to save this till the end. It's available now, right? Because I didn't want you to go while you were watching this webinar because, let's face it, this is the best, best webinar you're going to see all day. And I wanted you not to miss it. All right, so if you go to DevExpress.com, you're locked in. If you go to download your products under Client Center, you will see 13.2.5. Why 0.5? Because we had a couple of betas. You know, we, we make each release as solid as possible. So that's available. Check out the what's new. When you click on what's new, uh, usually you know you'll get the per the 0.5 or the 0.x version of what's new. So what's changed in that 0.x version? But at the top you'll find like the major uh, what's new. And this is where we do a lot of the hard work, right? So uh, if you click on ASP.NET. You can see uh, headings for all the cool things. Now, uh, I, you know, for example, in the batch editing, it talks a little bit about how also batch editing is good for performance because it's running on client side. You, you'll see little things. You'll see links to blog posts that I've written about, the new application themes. All of the good uh, goodies are there to kind of get you thinking about like, yeah, this is what I want to do. I want to I want to check this out. So, downloaded it, play around with the new demo center. Uh, also, 
you, you might be asking yourself, yeah, yeah, that's great, Mahul, but you know, what if I want to learn DevExpress, right? So if you go to YouTube, uh, you will definitely find that we have a fantastic presence there. So if you search for DevExpress or Develop Express, you're going to find the De Developer Express channel. Now here, today, we're going to be releasing a ton of videos that Amanda and I have worked hard on and that show you. So, you know, these walk you through everything from uh, the ribbon control and how to use it to uh, the new support for the new MVC extensions that are available. So all of those are going to be there. We also got these nice little, you know, other items for uh, past webinars. We've got a full MVC getting started, reporting, up uh, dashboards. There's a ton of things, win forms, you name it. All of our stuff is out there. So uh, the first thing I recommend, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook. You, you'll get tons of goodies out there. All right. That's it. Thanks to Mahul for presenting. And thank you all for joining us. Just a reminder, when you exit this webinar, you will see a short survey. Please take a second to comment. We truly appreciate it. Again, thanks for choosing DevExpress. Bye-bye.